Okay. Do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you may begin. Thank you. Adjacent to the beach, historically the funk zone has been a diverse area. Car dealers, surfboard shapers, lumberyards, art studios, and aeronautical research labs. A place where the rules are loosely enforced. This map shows the boundaries of the neighborhood, and the blue dots signify a growing number of creatives in the area, having doubled in the past four years. A recent study by Americans for the Arts concludes that projects with art at the center that are both authentic and fresh are creating jobs, reactivating old spaces, connecting neighbors, increasing tourism, and offering hope as communities look forward. Creatives need a space, a sense of place to work and collaborate with others. Besides a being in a concentrated uh, geological, geographical location, other hallmarks of creative districts include late night dining and coffee shops, unique gathering spaces, and the ability to work odd hours and make noise, dust, and fumes without disturbing anyone. As principals of Creative Collaboration Network, Clay and I are entrenched in the neighborhood. Twelve years ago, a group of artists, scientists, and engineers began meeting at his studio on Helena Avenue in the Funk Zone to share ideas and work on projects. The Fishbone Arts Collaborative was born and has brought many creative events to the streets of the Funk Zone. I began the Graffiti Project as an effort to provide young artists with a place to make and show their art. It was held in various parking lots around town. In 2009, the Languishing La Entrada project provided an opportunity to replace broken glass windows with 18 panels where artists in a variety of styles could showcase their work. It has become known as the Amass Gallery, Artist Making a Street Scene. When developers began to acquire large funk zone parcels in 2011, we sought funding from the Santa Barbara Foundation to conduct a study of, of a growing presence of creatives in the neighborhood. We wanted to hear from the creatives about why they chose the Funk Zone and how the pending development would affect them. We asked creatives what they wanted and what they feared. The classic artist dilemma. Artists move into an undesirable area, create a vibe, make an area trendy, property sell, rents increase, and it's no longer affordable to the very people that made it funky. We have a different idea. Let's expand the definition of creativity to not only include fine artists, but designers, architects, engineers, scientists, software developers, anyone who creates and innovates. Basically a creative collaboration zone combining art, science, and technology. Richard Florida, author of The Rise of the Creative Class, cites three major ingredients that attract creatives that satisfy this broader definition. He considers industrial output and patented innovations per capita the number of people with bachelor's degree or higher, and measures the number and range of foreign-born, gay, and creative citizens. Santa Barbara ranks fairly well when compared to cities of equal size. We are the retirement place of choice for many creatives. We tend to lose younger people to larger markets with more opportunities. And we also have a growing number of high-tech firms, but we are somewhat limited in attracting people of diversity. We wondered, how could we compete? What are the best of the best cities doing right to attract and um, retain vibrant, a vibrant creative community? We visited Boston, Providence, Rhode Island, Western Massachusetts, New York City, and across Pennsylvania, finishing up in Pittsburgh. The results were fascinating. In Providence, we found two symbiotic projects, the Steel Yard, a former steel mill, and Art Space 220. Both nonprofit organizations focused on availability of tools, shared studio space, and classes in a variety of creative disciplines. Public and private partnerships were formed around creative projects to benefit the city and the citizens. Wooster's programs are housed. I can even take a breath. <sighs> Come on, Wooster. All right. <laughs> There we go. Wooster's programs are housed in the city's Department of Economic Development, who partner with businesses, landowners, local colleges and universities, and arts organizations to provide ample opportunities for creativity to flourish. Their goals are around enlivening the inner city neighborhoods and public participation with the arts. In the bustling Bushwick area of Brooklyn, New York, abandoned industrial buildings play host to a number of performing performance venues, creative incubators, and outdoor gallery spaces. Artists can still find affordable live workspace here after being priced out of places like Soho and Dumbo. 
In Pittsburgh, after losing half of their population in the 1980s, the Lawrenceville Corporation was established to provide economic and marketing support to creatives, to buy and refurbish properties as live workspaces, and create street-level public spaces such as galleries, workshops, and performance venues, adding atmosphere and establishing a strong creative presence in the Lawrenceville neighborhood. In each case, the common denominator for these creative districts was some sort of backbone organization that coordinates the efforts of all the stakeholders. Curation and coordination is essential and should come from an outside organization looking out for everyone's best interests. Cooperation requires connecting with other stakeholders to see how they can contribute. Can the city relax zoning considerations, modify parking requirements, and streamline event planning permits? Can landowners set aside a percentage of available space for creative use? And how can other businesses benefit from a vibrant creative atmosphere? Effective branding and marketing is crucial to creating a, a, the vibe. <clears throat> Events like Focus on the Funk Zone create neighborhood identity and bring neighbors together to socialize, connect, and prosper. Focusing on the creation of a creative district can attract sophisticated and affluent tourist dollars and provide a backlot for Santa Barbara's thriving art scene. In addition to the long-standing ocean and surf cultures, lively street art and the new urban wine trail join the Arts Fund Gallery along with a half a dozen new exhibition spaces as artists and galleries open their doors. There are also a number of growing gourmet eateries and unexpected surprises enhance the entire Funk Zone experience. This is the moment in time. We can do nothing and allow gentrification and further dislocation of the creative class to occur, or we can take a stand and intentionally develop a creative anchor for the Central Coast. Our findings support the establishment of a backbone organization with a vision and verve to make the magic happen. Thank you. Thank you.